Before we get to this amazing interview, I'd like to take a moment to say that this epic chat you're about to hear wouldn't be possible without the collaborative efforts with the amazing people at Geek Network. Geek Network is a multimedia suite of all things nerdy, and you should check out geek-network.com to get your fix. But remember, always geek responsibly. All right, Buzz, Buzz, babies, it's another episode of Blake's Buzz, and this is one of those great collaborative episodes I've been doing with Geek Network, and this one is special, folks. I have a couple creators with me today that have been so influential both to me and comic books as an entire spectrum medium and movement. With me today, I've got artist extraordinaire Alex Maleev. I've got also an artist, but an amazing writer, Brian Michael Bendis. You're welcome, sir. I've got these two iconic creators with me today. I've been freaking out all day. I'm not going to lie. I ate a handful of Tums before this episode. I've done hundreds <laughs> of creator interviews, guys, and and I'm 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 a little I'm just a little nervous, and uh, but I'm also just ecstatic to talk to you both. The things that you two have made have been so influential, like not only to our culture and 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 comic book fans but just to me personally like the stuff that you have given me that you guys have no idea who i am you have no idea what you've done in my past but you've been so influential to my nerd life and i was so grateful excited ecstatic to get to talk to you both and okay. i just i just i can't believe you're both here and i'm so excited and and and, and that's it that's the intro and how are you both doing today? Let's start there. Let's start easy. How you doing? Well, that was super sweet of you. I really appreciate that. That was genuinely kind. And thank you for remembering that I used to draw that, 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 that <laughs> never happened. So I, I deeply appreciate it. Alex, how are you doing today, sweetie? You, you're drawing uh, pages in our book right now. I am. I know. Yes. But it's kind of like a pop-up surprise. Did so. you, did you, are you drawing the web comic, the unicorn? Yeah. Yes. yes. I almost thought that was you. Oh yes. That's so cool. <laughs> That's, That's me so cool. channel, channeling, uh, channeling our lead character, like trying to uh, channel her discovering Roberta Gregory comics in her friend's like house from the 90s and trying to draw like that. That was what I was trying to do. That's you know, that old thing. Alex, do you feel threatened at all? Is he coming for your job? Like, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I don't think so. This is, uh, let, let me see what's behind you, Ryan. Is it, did you rearrange everything again or not? Let me see. Alex, for, this is year 25 of Alex thinking. Yes. Only yes. hang up his artwork if he can see it. Like <laughs> no other reason I would be hanging up his artwork. Not that I'm a fan or honored to be ah. one of the few people in the world that has original Alex and believe artwork in their home. A couple, this one over here done for me as a present wow. yes. double painting no, no i'm not going to hang that up i'm going to wait till he's on zoom you uh, i had to do this because that was in a guilt trip that one the yellow daredevil right it was something you you got on my case for something i forgot what it was i don't but, remember guilt i remember looking yeah it was i was really guilty that's that's why i went old <laughs> that's a guilt painting you could tell yeah. from brushwork okay <laughs> i can tell from because it's very sad daredevil <laughs> 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 he's he's always also, sad. Is he ever happy? I don't think he's ever really happy. Also, uh, Blake, uh, right there, that's an Alex Maleev, uh Hellboy. That's a that's Whoa. a cool one of a kind, one of a kind, baby. Yeah, that's a that, I, that's a very rare uh, piece of art that I covet very, very sincerely. Whether he believes me or not, and this, this is the hang second up, I'll take trip, it down the second and hang up the, the the David Mac that I usually hang up there anyway. Uh, I, I was going to bring it up, uh, Brian, but I, I interviewed David not uh, not that long ago. And oh, um, great. man, I've all he did was talk you up the whole time. I was like, I did it for the it was for his Marvel, the Marvel cover book that Clover Press put out. Yes. Uh, his art book. And so he came on and and, and we, we chatted for a while and, and I, I had to keep pulling him back. I was like, Brian's not even here, dude. Like we, uh, we're talking about good. you. This is your night. No, but he just like. Uh, and I was do I was trying to bring the drama out too. I was like, even when he killed Echo, like you guys were still. <laughs> <laughs> but like everyone knows, like I get I get dings for killing Echo, but like also like three months later we brought her back together. Yeah, yeah. In in another book that was always the plan. So I know I I get the ding for it, and I'll take it for sure. But uh, uh but we did bring her back. She's on Disney Plus. Yeah. coming soon <laughs> she's fine so but well, that's sweet i i was um 
very honored to contribute to both David and Alex's um, uh, Marvel Art Clover Press. Um, oh, did you write? Did you write intro essays for him? I wrote very long essays that were really. Alex will never know because he allegedly, doesn't... allegedly. Yeah, Alex doesn't know, but uh, uh, what you what what you got from David was uh, a bit of. I know we've been friends for many years, but these these essays, which were many many pages long, were a quite a quite a look back on on a, a couple of relationships I'm very very proud of and uh, nice. have a lot of emotions about and uh and so uh yeah so we've we've had cause recently to reflect on our 30 year friendship and Alex and I are in our 25 year friendship I have had a wonderful time reflecting back on it Alex refuses to read it and that's okay <laughs> that's how he's <laughs> reflecting on it but uh, uh but it it did give give cause to really give some time in in reflection of friendship which is in itself a gift to have if for for those of us who are able to have them yeah yeah right uh, you know someone's gonna read that and someone's gonna tell me what you wrote <laughs> you know? i know I'm, I'm assuming eventually you're gonna feel really bad for not reading it okay oh, yeah, and you're gonna have to clear up the whole wall behind you because it'll be guilt trip after guilt trip baby I love the I I love the the rampant guilt tripping that's that's going on here. It's, it it's is, like I'm it's like I'm talking to my our, mom. It's like I'm interviewing my mom right now, guys. What's going on here? <laughs> the backbone of our 25 year relationship: two men raised by uh, uh, women who made us bulletproof to guilt. You cannot be guilty. <laughs> throw it at each other, knowing no one's getting hurt. <laughs> are you working? Are you drawing right now, Alex? Are you? Yeah, working? yeah, I am. Nice, nice. Uh, is that are you uh, are you working on secret stuff? No, I'm working on the masterpiece. Awesome. Oh, nice, nice. Hey, you know what? Last night I wrote the new last line of the series. Like I found a better last line. I was really excited. I just want to tell you. I don't know how to feel about that. I know, no, that it it was. It, you'll when you read it, I think you'll you'll have to have your feelings. I'm not gonna read it. <laughs> the script you have to read. You don't have to read the I'm essay. Read you it. have to read the script. <laughs> well, if you haven't been reading the script, you're doing a really amazing job. That's yeah, amazing. that's that's impressive. <laughs> your your <laughs> intuitions have been outstanding. Well, that's the best compliment I've ever had. <laughs> you know, Brian, thank you so much for this. All these years, all, all these years, years I've been read wow. it. Like Brian a finally trick. told me I did a good job on Blake's buzz. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if, uh, you know, I just wrote in Alex's um, Marvel art book that's coming soon from Clover Press, I was um, uh, honored enough to write um, some of the text inside of it. And I talk uh, a great deal about how, um, you know, uh, when we were coming up together and I discovered Alex's work, uh, it was the best artwork of anyone who I thought was maybe my age. Like I, I didn't know him, but we were coming up in black and white comics in the '90s. So I, I, I weirdly assumed everyone was about my age, and I was like, "Oh, that's." And it was by far the person I was most trying to be like. Like I had a lot of art friends. Like you met David Mack recently, mm -hmm. and uh, you know my friend Mike Oming. There's people in my life who were very influential, but from afar, I look at Alex's work and go, "That, that's what I want to draw like. Like that's." That's what I that what I want it to look like this, and then the journey to actually um, uh, get to work with him, and then become friends with him, and then find ourselves decades later with an actual body of work together is actually kind of amazing. That I that 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 that's where it came from. Now the the yeah. Eastern the Eastern European in me will say, "What the hell is this guy talking about?" Like what? <laughs> but I'm supposed to say thank you, Brian. There you go. <laughs> you got it. I got it. So that's exciting. Uh, so he was on the Clover it, from Clover Press too. It sounds like that's that's a they haven't announced it yet. I don't know if we're allowed to talk about it, but that's cool. No, no, yeah, it it's been announced. It's oh, it has been. Started. Oh, that's it released simultaneously. I'm sorry. Yes, I I forgot. David Nakayama was the new one. Okay, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Okay, no. okay. Uh, Max, Max, and mine. You and Max were at the same yeah. time. Yep. Yeah. yeah. We can edit that. We can edit that out. Uh, I did research <laughs> my guests. I swear. Um, <laughs> keep your geek mistakes in. Let the people. Yeah. Let people yeah know. Let the, okay. like, I'm not perfect. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. No. Uh, no, I, that's these those campaigns have been very cool. The books are absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and then, as as Brian mentioned, like the body of work, 
that you all have. And then Alex, you've done a ton of covers too, uh, on top of mm-hmm. interior work. How did you, so you haven't done interior work in a, in a little bit. I, I feel like was maybe the last one was event Leviathan when, when you guys were partying over at DC, maybe. And that came out actually, that, that came out really, really nice. It, it printed out really nice and, and it looks great. I think in my opinion, Brian, nice. I don't know why we don't get complimented about this more. We should be, we, but I think it looks really, really good. If this is the last thing we did and it's not, then uh, we go out with a bang. But at the moment we are doing um, a different project and there's uh, all the interiors and the covers mm-hmm. and many, many variants, of course, uh, uh, drawn by different people, it, they're all ours. But think nice. about how many, how many thousands of pages of the team we've done together. I, so I bet it's not like thousands. There, there is, there is. Well, we got, we got. Let's see, we got the Daredevil. You yeah, know, just, so just Daredevil's like, got to be almost a thousand. Sixty. Right? Like we, we, we start going through all that stuff. We're gonna feel very old. At the I end know, of the- but, <laughs> but, but there are certain projects we worked on that, that behind the scenes there was enormous amount of work that the public may not have assumed. But Spider Woman was probably as much work as the entire run of Daredevil. But it was only like seven issues of comic. And uh, the um, motion comic experiment of the 2000s that that we were a part of, but so there are like things that we did that were a big event in our lives that was mostly behind the scenes to, mm. to the public, including um, the fun we had at, at DC. Like we actually uh, got uh, we did our last book at DC was uh, Checkmate, but Checkmate. it came out during the uh, okay the, the darkest winters of the pandemic. So you know, uh, but we're uh, very proud of it. Some of Alex's is, is just wonderful work by Alex. But the, the, the thing that we Leviathan. did, mm-hmm. yeah, Van Leviathan, we're very proud of. Uh, and but uh, during that period as well, Alex and I spent quite a few years working on our first creator-owned book called Scarlet, which is a book that Alex uh, and I fully created. And 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 for those who don't know. It's it's amazing to do a book together at Marvel or DC where you're hired to work together and then you can really build something. But it's a whole other thing to like create something from scratch. It's like mm-hmm. um, a lot of the same emotions of like having a baby, like you know, because you're you're saying, hey, you want to have a baby and raise it? Like you like it's not just hey, we're gonna make a baby. This this baby will be around for a while if we play our cards right and do everything like we're supposed to. So it's a real investment in each other. It's a real investment in that third thing that we make when we're together. Mm-hmm. So um, so Scarlet ended up being uh, everything we'd hoped it would be, a, a real a real challenge uh, creatively, and yet also found an audience. And we're really grateful for that. I, I think the third volume of Scarlet, which we did at DC, is among Alex's finest efforts yeah. in his whole life. It's the most beautiful thing. Um, then um, when the world pivoted towards the reality that Scarlet was fantasizing about when the, the when the yeah. fantasy of Scarlet became the reality of our life here in Portland, specifically, um, um, I, I did say to Alex, if we do this again, uh, it'll be, it'll be uh, thematically more fun. That's all I, I said. Mm-hmm. I I I, want, I I go. We've we've done some books that are very very dark and take us into very uh, complicated emotional places, and then we've also done some books that have uh, sparked to both Alex's and I's very strange shared humor. And uh, and and then I wanted. I definitely the only thing I was coming into masterpiece for. See what I did? I pivoted right to masterpiece. Yeah, was, uh, I was, usually have to do that. You did it for me. <laughs> there you go. Uh, is um is 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 what the tone of the book I wanted to make with my friend Alex was next and uh, and that that was like the mandate and from there we were able to build an entire new universe of crime characters and a whole a whole base of 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 places we can have fun to do the things that we do I'm 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 so so proud of uh, what we can build together it makes me so happy. Yeah, I don't um I don't understand the dark magics that you guys produce when you work together. Like certain creators like get that I, it happens over time. And as you, as we mentioned already, you guys have quite the body of work. You you've gotten to know each other, you work well together. There's great chemistry involved here which you can see in like every page and every panel and every pixel if you read it digitally, right? Uh and and you know the the stuff that you guys produce, it's just it's 
I don't want to, I don't want to put this lightly. It really is magnificent. Uh, uh, Scarlet. I had the same vibes when I read Scarlet, right? Like it was, uh, oh, it was, it was like, a, it, 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 it absorbed me. It took me away, even though while simultaneously like reminding of like the terribleness that was like encroaching around us, you know? And, but, but even then it like, it, it was, uh, it, it was fun in a weird way. It's, it's, you know, you, you know like it was just, it was, it was transformative and, tra and transportive and everything you guys have done has, has successfully done that to me as a reader. And I, and I've heard other people say the same things. I'm definitely not alone in that, but it's funny to me because of all these great things that, that you guys have done together, you know, the people, the the nerd circles like they're they're all begging for like for brian and co to go back to crime like it's just this it's they're always like no matter how great you wrote guardians no matter what you did with matt murdoch no matter what you did with the x-men and like all these things and like they all want you to like go back to this to like these noir roots and true crime and these like dark gritty stories which yeah, you've kind of cool. done but like you mentioned, it's got a lighter, it's got a lighter, the masterpiece has a lighter note to mm -hmm. it, you know? Um, is that, Alex, is that weird? Like for you, like when you, like that kind of tonal it, shift? Well, it's it's weird because I'm trying to stay away from textures. I'm trying to stay away from all the greedy stuff that we did at Daredevil. Yeah. Uh, so that there's no segue to, to people thinking, oh, they're, they're doing the same thing. It's not. It, and, and that's the challenge for me artistically is to simplify um everything i do and it's uh, I'm, I'm not telling you that i will succeed because it, i'm struggling with it every time but the goal is to to um, you know keep it simple as, as much as i can and and <laughs> don't draw too many lines <laughs> less 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 lines in this one because i want the colors to speak in it as well not just okay. the, um, yeah we have a new collaborator this time around you know alex has worked with very few colorists um uh and it just happens to be that when you look back you go oh those are the best colorists of like all time dave stewart matt hollingsworth yeah. alex himself um and uh, and so um you know like a like a filmmaker looking at cinematographers sometimes you're looking around like well what's what what new flavor can i bring mm -hmm. to this for this like what and um and at Dark Horse, I, I had just been handed an advanced PDF of Minor Threats by, by Patton and Jordan, and mm -hmm. and uh, and there was the colors of Ian Herring, and I was like, oh, look who's back! This is some big swings. I was really, really interested in and the and the palette choices, some of which I had not seen before, and I I, I had that weird like moment where you go alex ian hmm, i wonder if alex i wonder if alex would appreciate these swings too and i was uh delighted that he did and also triply delighted that it all came together and that that they do create something brand new together it was and, and you would notice that i i don't like when we get the pages back and, and the color i don't really like i don't make notes i i almost make no comments because i want everyone to contribute to this without being uh, you know, infringed on their the creative yes. yeah. uh, uh, area, you know, and 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 that's why you know, like I, I barely ask you anything about the script. I just and and you don't give me any notes on on what I should do. We trust each okay. other, so oh, now no. it now goes three ways, you know. Uh, I'm so glad. I was going to ask if Ian, Brian bossed you around. I was. Gonna... <laughs> no, well, you you were you were talking earlier about like about like how it happens that something special happens with us sometimes. And mm. uh, I, I think we found early on that, you, that we don't know. Like uh, I, well, it's, it, it's a weird chemistry of how he came to comics and how I came to comics and what we were in our energies as humans and, and, and you bring it together and it's, and it's healthy for us. And, brings out the best in both. And I think, but if I had to like really break it down, that thing I said earlier about looking at that early Alex work before I knew him and coveting it, it in the best way so much, I take the responsibility of writing for him and with him mm -hmm. so strongly 
that I that 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 I, I think that even my smallest choices he knows are coming from a place of deep respect and uh, and 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 that's what you get from it. So I, I I I try to share that with people. Like I know you can't fake it, but if you feel it. You can put it in your scripts and, and get that from your collaborators, like from people who want to do this for a living. It really is. It becomes the most special part of the whole process. That's awesome. Alex, yeah. I I do. I, I noticed when reading Masterpiece that some of the textures and your kind of visual quirks were absent. Like when, like looking back at like Alias and Daredevil and some of your cover work and, and stuff like that. And it, it looked a lot cleaner um, and, and I really dug it. Like it, it, I could tell it was you, right? But it was a, it was a, a, a different you. A, 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 like you, I could tell that you were, you were trying something. Well, new. here's what I'm trying. I'll, I'll tell you. Like if, if you don't see the rest of the, uh, the studio, but this is what is I have opened in front of me every time I have a doubt, and this is. Oh, so that's. Wow. John, yeah. uh, John. Oh, John. I thought it was going to be Toth. I have that wow. book. Wow. Okay. I am so, like the more I look at this, this is he is a true master. Was mm -hmm. a true master, and I'm so sad that we we lost him because I think he was probably, in my opinion, the best working artist. At the, you know, I, I, yeah. I, the more I study this, the more I, I <laughs> I'm speechless about it. Uh, so yeah, I'm deeply influenced by um, Jean Paul Leon's work here. That's and I thought you were going to talk about your because, um, uh, li like many of our our peers and even our heroes, you enter what's called the Alex Toth phase. Yes, where you um, get to a place where you go, all right, I figured a lot out. Now let's break it down to what I actually need. Like who am mm. I? Who who am I in, under all of this? all of this magic tricks and trickery. And it's a, um, a, a very admirable uh, phase in an artist's career. Many artists, like in, painters, printmakers, many uh, creators go through this phase and it's exciting to see Alex enter that. And I was happy that I, I feel like almost like subconsciously I wrote towards that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, 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 or something that, that would invite that uh, without it feeling weird, and I, 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 that, 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 I, when the first pages came in, I, I, I did, I, I go, well, you know, oh, good. So you're responsible for Alex's new I'm, technique and voice. No, yeah, no, no, I, no, I, 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 but I, I do have a front row seat to the evolution, yeah. even in the sketches. You're like, oh, there's something else here. I'll let me write that. Let me yes nice. and that. It's, it's just all collaboration, and anytime anyone shows you something that makes you go, oh, oh. It, it, then, then that, that I I've learned over the just go with it, go for it, even if you're not even sure. Um, but obviously, in this time, it's immediately aesthetically gorgeous and easy to go with. It's not like, well, what is this? It's like, oh, it's a beautiful drawing. Let's let's make the most of it. You know, when you guys have worked together for like as long as 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 you two have, when when you're thinking of a new project like this, and and you. You get the idea for masterpiece. You get the, the these you know like character ideas, story beat ideas, and stuff. Do you do you do a lot of pre gaming with each other, like before the actual script gets written? Do you kind of play around and 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 talk and chat it through, or or do you do you like drop a draft off on Alex? Like how do how do you guys collaborate and work together? Of of my many collaborators, and I have a handful that I've had as long as Alex is something I I, I deeply. Um, proud of honestly to, to be if, if i'm allowed to say that and uh um uh with alex I, I, of, of the collaborators alex needs the least amount of conversation the least amount of like uh beat, beating it to death before we we hit the thing uh he needs very clear like inspiration and theme and like why are we doing this mm -hmm. And, uh, and, uh, and, and I know that if he, if he appreciates the theme of it, the subtext of the art, the acting, the characters and what, and the acting that's on, 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 on page will, will be what everything, which is what everyone really responds to in his work. And that, that's what I'm looking to inspire. And when, uh, when Masterpiece offered us 
uh, a story engine that literally allows Alex to do all that he has learned so far as, as a comic what creator. has he learned alex <laughs> no but the, the, you there's a there's a greatest hits that comes with it and that's allowed <laughs> to create new things with everything you've learned so far and that that and that that then we were off to the races but i i it's a mixture of he doesn't need much conversation and how much i admire what's going on over there and what i'm going to bring to him so yeah, and and and, that, and honestly, at this stage, it's a matter of uh, like, oh my god, like I, I don't know how to describe it. It feels like like we keep like, like let, let's keep going until we really mess one up, and we just keep and never it never happens. So it's like it's like we it feels like we keep this going back to the gambling table, or whether <laughs> I don't know what the re the reference I'm trying to make here is, but it does feel like like um like a magic trick that we just keep trying to do until someone sees it or something i don't know i'll, I'll, fi then, I'll figure it out then, later I'll, I'll come back to you with and and, and thank you for the trust uh then on the other side when when i get uh synopsis and and uh when i get the script and i get to know which characters and what the characters are like of course i'm gonna uh, start sketching stuff out and, and and trying to figure out what they're gonna look like what they're gonna be dressed like you know uh, their environment and then every once in a while you know i i come up with something that I feel I've nailed it and I send it back to Brian. And then, you know, halfway through the book, I decided that the, the, the character doesn't look right. Like you remember the first issue, I completely changed uh, one of the main characters because I just didn't feel excited about it. Um, so it is the process between the both of us. And I send you the, uh, the new pages and you go, oh yeah, this is a lot better. And you know, a character you expected that it would look like me when it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, like well, that's the one thing you get to like. Yeah. Like you know, Alex is going to cast himself as one of these characters, and I, and and I just re remember I started deciding before I, I, the Alex will cast himself as this character. Like it's just very funny to me, um, and, and very I know very weird aside comic thing, but but also that's the magic of doing a creator own book is that you can go hey no i i got a better idea anywhere in the process and you know and, and having that magic is part of doing something like this well we we casted uh meaning me in that uh, <laughs> which is my son who is now taller than <laughs> i am uh so yeah well a, a part of my family my dna is in the book do you know fraction's son is also taller than him now and these are very tall men i like, would well fraction is not that tall how tall is Fraction? Come on. Yeah, I know he's tall. Six, six Again, I, I, I have a different oh, I, I'm, not gonna say I'm not going to say nothing there, but I think he's not that tall. Okay. I heard Matt According was to me and Kelly, too, years. he's very tall. <laughs> That's why he worked on Godzilla, because he towers over everybody else. That's why they put him on Monarch. He's... One of my, no, not put him on Monarch. He, he conjured that during the pandemic, talking about what we were talking about earlier, about friends taking big swings. Nice. Yeah, That's, which is cool because I've do I've I've gotten to watch the first eight episodes of that because I'm doing I'm doing press for that uh, with Geek Network too. So like I've I've been getting to like explore like I've been nerding out. It's it's been a real fun week, guys. I've been That's good. I've seen it too, so I know you. Isn't it good, great? Oh, it's I, yeah. I know I know we're here to talk about you guys, but no, but no, you no, brought no, up my, Matt. You <laughs> but it's my so darling good. friend kicking ass on his TV show <laughs> that he worked on for years is definitely worth stopping to talk about. Yeah, uh, yeah, Alex, great. if you don't know. Fraction during the pandemic created the Godzilla show that's on Apple Plus with Kurt Russell and uh, John Goodman. It's a huge show. He was literally on the top of mountains of glaciers <laughs> filming Godzilla stuff just uh, last year, and now the show's coming out. It's and it's getting great reviews, and it's a really good show. Like really, I, I did not know that. Congratulations! Yeah, it, yeah. yeah huge. Like, again, we were talking before that we started recording about how during the pandemic a lot of creators took big swings and now we're seeing the fruits of them and then and now we have the magical thing i just posted on my blue uh my, my blue sky is uh um is matt and kelly sue have matching billboards up in la with marvels and godzilla and how many that's so cool have matching billboards that's kind of cool anyway in in our lifetime is that people who create stuff like the, they used to be everyone had lanes like musician mm. 
comic book creator. And now, now everything blends. And as yeah. everyone experiments with genre, they're experimenting with form. And then the form begets other ways to deliver your content. And all of a sudden you have all these new languages to work from. So I, I, I think about that. I think about like, you know, what drives us into certain areas and yeah, just things evolve as we go. Like mm -hmm. I'm working on stuff now that I couldn't have dreamed of when I was 12. You wow. know what I mean? Like, like, like the, the, the space didn't exist and how exciting that is. So I had dreams when I was 12, was able to check off a shocking amount of the, those boxes, no matter how crazy I got with them. And then as we become adults, as creators, you you get to make new checklists of things that wouldn't it be great if wouldn't mm. it, what what could I do with can, am I capable of this following thing and then and then these things appear in front of us so that's where we are right now in a very unique space including post pandemic when a lot of people decided to take really big swings during the pandemic and we're yeah. getting the fruits of that labor it's kind of cool yeah it's been it's been very I get I still feel weird thinking that that like the good stuff that came out of the pandemic, you know, like it's, 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 yeah. just, it's weird to say that aloud, but like, for me, like I'm getting to talk to Brian, Michael Bendis and Alex Malieve right now, this is happening because during the pandemic, my friends and I would zoom chat and we would talk to each other. And then that we ended up turning like these little fun group talks where we would talk about comics and movies and stuff we watched. And we were like, why don't we do like a podcast or something? And then, and then I, now I've been now I've been doing that for a couple of years, and and the people I've met, the creators I've met, I've gotten to do press at cons since the, you know it's just like all all of this happened because we were cooped up in the house and bored and didn't know what to do for a while. Yeah, you know? I, I don't think anyone. I think everyone understands. You know, you can yeah. have thoughts in your head about the pandemic, but yeah, I was um I, I was almost immediately impressed with how some of my friends rolled up their sleeves and decided to use that space to challenge themselves you know mm -hmm. and 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 some of some of them have de now delivered have publicly delivered the results and it's been really delightful re really amazing to see yeah it's been and like that and like the whole kickstarter boom crowdfunding boom like all these all the all the weird stuff in in comics that and and people like that got into the medium late you know that were just mm -hmm. like you know like like a lot more people started reading during the pandemic because yeah. like you know and like which is as i'm sure both of you know like it's just like less and less every year less and less people read and it's like please read please no, keep buying I, books <laughs> i i must say i i i think we're actually have more readers this generate this this generation oh, really? than we've had the entire time i've been in comics Oh wow! Yeah, as far as like, and I, it's somewhat accentuated by the fact that graphic novels are, um, you know, such a part of curriculums and mm -hmm. people's like, you know, I, I've literally gone in the time I've been in comics. I re I remember when my child was y much younger, and she brought one of my graphic novels to school, like one of my Spider Mans, and the teacher got mad. Right, like, oh, and, and 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 she wasn't even bringing it. She just wanted a dad thing with her. It was sweet, you know. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, and it's gone from they don't want graphic novels in school to they want graphic novels in school to we're fighting to keep graphic novels in school. Yeah. And, and that's a huge, like three tier cultural shift that's happened just in the language of graphic novels and the people who read them and how they're part of the real DNA of people's like reading. Right. Mm -hmm. And even watching my kids, I, I'm just saying I have kids of all so many different ages. I get to see, um, you know, sometimes anecdotal, but sometimes, oh, that's really what's happening now is, you know, kids using, you know, graphic novels and some of my friends graphic novels as uh, um, as as their book reports and stuff. One of my daughters was assigned David Walker's Black Panther Party uh, for for oh, a cool. book report. And, you know, I I just, you know, how do you even tell your friend what a that's every that's everything he could have possibly wanted from yeah. making that book and it happened like quickly it's amazing yeah yeah that that i i agree that is i love i love that that like it's all literature now right like it's it's all like i love that that because you, you'll still get those people right that are like 
oh, oh, they still make comics, but oh yeah, also, oh no, like, yeah, no, on but... the on the on like the spectrum of like academia, like it is it is studied, it's considered literature. Like there are pa- there are panels at like book conventions that are not comic cons. And I, when I was in grad school, like I wrote I wrote a paper on Captain America and talked about truth and stuff. Like and 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 my my English professors like they dug it when we talked about comic books and stuff in grad school. So yeah, it's, it's totally different than, cause I, I was a raised Catholic, right? So I went to private school as a kid and I, I remember, I remember getting yelled at. I remember like when people were trying to get rid of Harry Potter for different reasons than we are now. Right. Cause like gross, but like back when it was just like magic, you can't talk about magic in Catholic school. And like, but I just, I remember like it being like when you go to the library hour, right? And if you, there, first of all, there were no comics in, in our school library, but if someone caught you like reading a comic or a graphic novel, like you got in trouble. It was like, you put that away. Like you're like, you sinner. Like, it was just like, what? No, I went to, I went to same. I went to a private uh, um, Jewish uh, boys school okay. and I had found my calling early. So I was just sitting in the bathroom all day drawing you know, superhero anatomy just in the textbooks and on every page with practicing and practicing and practicing and uh, confusing and confounding just about anyone <laughs> knew me and thinking what I was doing. So, yeah. So, all right, back to yeah, us. It's a good, it's a, it's a good, it's a great time to be a nerd lately. Um, it is. And also just in getting to see your friends live. Succeed. Yeah. Like beyond their, their wildest dreams is, is kind of amazing. Yeah. I, I can't even imagine uh, going back though to masterpiece. And, and as we, as we mentioned, like Alex kind of uh, workshopping a new style, right? It, it's not a new style. It's, but it, I mean, it's evolution. It, evolution. Yeah, he's a, he's a, it's a, it's an evolution, right? So I don't jock just recently put out gone through that new distillery publisher. Oh, I haven't and, seen it yet, it, 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 but it, it, it's akin to what, alex is doing he's not he's not doing as many of the textured effects it's a little cleaner uh it it, it's it's very much more focused on his own line art and it produces a kind of vulnerability that i think like tonally and narratively works and and it works for gone and it's doing the same thing in masterpiece with what alex is doing because there's there is a vulnerable there's a vulnerability there we're not as your audience isn't super akin to it yet but i I feel like we're gonna get there just with that kind of like family drama right like there's nothing's gonna be perfect and 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 she's had an odd upbringing and, and 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 is about to fall into a wild world of shenanigans i feel you know after after reading that first issue there there's a lot that's about to happen but this this evolution of style that alex is bringing to the page these these cleaner lines is the, the you know more focused on like the 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 raw art i guess i, I would say maybe uh it's it brings out a different layer of the narrative it brings out a different layer of these characters and it it kind of it produces like a it, it almost produces like a new mystery. Like, like it, not only are we intrigued to see where the story's going to go, where the characters are going to go, but I'm like, where the hell is Alex going to go? And like, you know, and like, where is he going to take this next? And then, uh, and then, of course, there's a couple pages where you go full Malieve, right? And like the the ma- the the backstory with the maze layouts and stuff, where where you where you go like full. I was like, oh, I was like, I was like, there it is. Yeah, but yeah. I. I just, I really, really commend you for, first of all, you don't have to try, right? You don't, or you, <laughs> no, you always have to try. I'm sorry. You, you don't, have to. you don't have to experiment anymore, Alex. Like, like you are, you are well-respected. You are like, no. people love your art. Like you have, you have established yourself and, and you're no, still pushing. Wait, no, no, no. Uh, I, I, I see where you're going. I'm going to stop you before you go too, too far. I, okay. Uh, um, because I got to bring you back from there. It's going to take me longer. Uh, <laughs> look, uh, I don't have to. There's no such thing I don't have to. If, if we don't do this thing, uh, if we don't challenge ourselves, mm-hmm. um, then why are we doing it? Mm-hmm. Why? Exactly. Why, why would I want to sit down and, and, and be bored to death 
because I got to do the same thing okay. over and over and over again. And, and again, like how many thousands of pages have we drawn together? They I'm going to say 57,000. Okay, the, thank you. Uh, and change. So if we have to, uh, just to, just to entertain ourselves, forget about the audience. We have to because we got to keep some creative sanity. Mm. Uh, otherwise, there's no reason to do it. And we've you know, also, I, from day one up till right this second, you realize what a gift, what a gift that we get to tell stories, that we get to do any of this, any part of it. Mm -hmm. And also on top of being allowed a moment of true creative freedom in which we can explore every idea that's possibly in our head right now is such a gift. If we don't take every opportunity allowed us in this moment, we're just, then why bother? Don't even, don't even be here. So, uh, and also Alex and I have a great deal of shared heroes whose works we admire and choices we admire and we uh, find ourselves often in the, particularly in, the, in this last decade, um, uh, in, in the same space as our heroes had been in and, and the opportunity to make the choices that we admired and to avoid the choices we did not. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, and, so, and so here we are like with the choice to literally do any Marvel character, but we're investing in ourselves in a brand new world of intrigue, uh, both artistically and for ourselves to to have something that we own together, that 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 is something we I I, I know that if I was hearing it about someone else, I would like that they're doing that. Like I think I often have to think, what would my like? I'm not a fan of me, but if I was, what would I what what would that person want? And 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 those choices become very clear and to take big swings and try new things and and try to evolve every relationship I'm in to the highest artistic place we can possibly go. And also I, 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 I with my Jewish guilt comes um, the, the, you know, the fact that uh, my friend here has offered his, the, the miracle of his time in partnership. I, I must return the favor by writing something uh, uh, with everything. Oh, I, well, uh, I know I'm serious. With every, I know I know I, you, you do not. That is the biggest <laughs> gift someone can offer. You've got to bring it back. So it's the best. And, and, and then I learned who benefits the audience who buying it. They got a book there. We're two people who really gave a shit about each other's time. And, and then, you know, who wouldn't want to read that? That's so sweet. <laughs> yeah. And the did other you, thing, you know, you, not to you, pivot the subject, but one of, you know, we're talking about, you know, it's such a, it's such a, um, interesting thing to make comics in, in any generation, in any day and age. But, you know, I was um, listening to some people online talk about how, you know, as things become more as digital as the everything, mm -hmm. the, the fact that even a digital comic, you open it up and you can literally see someone drew this, like some, someone sat down in maybe the exact same position that you're reading it in was the artist drawing this for you. And how that's that's as intimate as you can get, even with the you know the the space between us. It there's a, an immediate intimacy that comics offers that that uh, you know other mediums don't have the exact same feel, right? So it's it's exciting to have that experience evolve, even as the space that we're making the stuff evolves. In. But that's what you were talking about when you you can see you can almost feel Alex on the page. It's because you're literally sitting where he was sitting when he was making it i'm just right, like Alex right, right there right underneath that screen there's another one that has the page on it <laughs> there you go well no I, i'm i'm did i sound really like playing. really portland hippie when i just said that right now Alex? it was good no it was good he's got I mean, some like, portland distance from me so okay it's good it's it's it, first of all anything you like anything you say anything brian it's gonna sound great uh that's, I don't know. Oh, no, no, that's not true <laughs> I mean, don't get us canceled, but walk the line. I didn't mean that. I mean, I just say dumb shit all the time. Like going uh, online last night, raving and ranting about my amazing Bonanza podcast that I listened to that Andy gave me. <laughs> anyway. 
Uh, but I, so I got David going back to David Mack. And when I got to talk to him uh, and when he wouldn't stop talking about you, uh, oh. that, <laughs> but he, he was very excited. He's, he's been messing around at dark horse for a while. And he was very excited that jinx world found a new home at, at dark horse. Yeah. He, uh, we're at, we're at dark horse in part because of how they've been treating David over the years. You nice. know, we, um, uh, for people who don't know, like I, I live here in Portland, uh, Dark Horse is in Portland uh, w with a, a f quite a few comic companies now, but um, Portland's always been a strange, real, actual hub of comic book community, even before I got here, going back decades. And uh, um, and so over the years, I, I befriended Mike Richardson and the, the, the creator of Dark Horse Comics, and he made it very clear decades ago that I had a home there when I was ready and you know but we'd already obligated ourselves at Marvel and other places mm -hmm. so um but I I did years ago say to my wife Elisa that that we this we will be I, the the goal is to end up at Dark Horse and to live the Mike Mignola lifestyle dream um that that that's that that would that would be the after Marvel goal and uh, we were going to do that in 2018, but Dan DiDio uh, came in and was um, uh, too generous for us not to take uh, very seriously. So we detoured over to DC for a while, but where we are right now at, at Dark Horse with Jinx World is exactly what the plan was when we were gonna leave Marvel. So and I am doubly blessed that I got to have both the DC experience and then get to do this dream that I had of having this uh, beautiful line of comics at the place that I pined for when I was coming up in the nineties. Oh, me and me and David used to like, like just to like sit in the car, driving to conventions going, man, I wish we were good enough to be a dark horse. Like that. I wish like dark horse liked us. Like, cause they were doing like the legends line and there was art Adams and Frank Miller and John Byrne. And we were over at, uh, at caliber and just, you know, thrilled to be published. I mean, what an honor to be published by anybody, but it just looked like dark horse was, Oh boy. There you go. So so every time uh, Dark Horse puts out, as they have this week, a new edition of Powers, uh, me and Mike do a little high five because we always knew it was a Dark Horse book, even though it's been published by Image, Marvel, DC. Everybody, yeah. yeah it, it, was, <laughs> it was always a Dark Horse book, and I'm glad we finally found our space. One good thing about you going to DC, though, was that's the reason we have the one. <laughs> well, there's a lot. I'm sorry. OK, I'm sorry. There's a lot. Uh, there's a lot of good reasons to be a DC. Uh, and like, I, I mean, who's who's going to say no where, where they're like, hey, do you want to write Superman? Like, no, I'm a little busy. Right. But, you know, like, no, it was uh, it was it was it was it was, it was a bummer that, that that was the end of a chapter in DC's history that didn't have much to do with me but i i we were sadly there for it meeting the end of dan's uh yeah. tenure there um but in, in that whole time they treated uh me and my friends very well and and oh. let us do what we wanted to do i mean they couldn't have dan kept every promise he made so it was a it, it was a wonderful experience for us creatively but you know hard 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 to watch you know it, yeah. a company fall apart like that yeah yeah they, they, they've had some rough i mean comic comics have gone a lot of comic stuff has, has has gone through some rough patches especially like the indie side of things and and it is it is a bummer but what what i what i meant to say was like yes I'm sorry. we we were very lucky to get that absolute edition of scarlet like yeah, you guys absolutely showed thank you thank <laughs> you it is literally one of my absolute favorite things that has birthed out of the universe. That, that <laughs> it is my favorite Alex work. On the, I literally said to Dan, I'm coming to DC to make an absolute edition of Alex's. <laughs> and and cool. we immediately put it in the pipeline. That was like first thing in because they take a long time to make. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm very happy to have you have one of them. No, you have one of my favorite things in the universe. What did you think about that, Alex? Like when you when you got to see it, like with the slipcase and the oversized edition and the... what I got to, what, I wish I had paper. More, I wish I had more copies because I gave all of them away. I don't even. I have gave them. a lot away too. I was so proud of it, and now I'm like, I want them all back. I mean, that's back. the <laughs> one thing. That's the one thing I gave people uh, to people away because I I knew that this is gonna age well, 
Uh, I was really, really proud of it. Um, and it, it really um, maybe was our best collaboration so far, oh, but we're in so the middle far, of but, that you know, may top it. <laughs> yes, but to, to, uh, our creator own, I mean, this is going to be our first baby. Our first baby is always special. Yeah, yeah, but, and I will say just for like creators, like who have any walk of life, when you're making something, no matter how, like you can, you make a comic book, it comes out, it looks like a comic book, but in your head, it's the absolute edition. Like every issue in your head feels like that. That's the treatment you're giving it. And I, 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 I uh, last year was reading an old interview by Jack Kirby and he was literally even back in the uh, like late sixties dreaming of absolute editions like like the, the the format that he goes i wish it was on like the best paper with the most beautiful hardcover like and that was like decades away from happening for him like like we he just like like wouldn't that like that even he wanted it so that that so knowing that every creator like like that's the that's the goal oh yeah so thank you i'm sorry to over uh <laughs> over yes. over answer a please apologize for answering my question enthusiastically brian like <laughs> <laughs> but no it 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 was it, it's a, a beautiful a beautiful book in, inside and out but that that edition was great and and that's that's one of the things i love like i love those those i'm a big hard like marvel omnibuses uh the, the dc hard like i'm a big omnibus hardcover guy uh i read yeah, a lot in just, just a couple weeks ago marvel put out a, a great collection of me and alex's iron man slash victor von doom run uh which i i was really happy to see a full collection of i i just oh, got cool. a couple in the house what? alex is looking at me like what what oh. where are my comps <laughs> Shit, man. let me see oh it's downstairs never mind sorry he's already oh. lost them he already gave them away <laughs> no we got it's a good good collection it really really nice. handsome you'll be happy they even I'll good, be happy good cover choice too that's the you could tell Jen was taking care of us. <laughs> which, which, which is it's not, it's not, it's not Invincible Iron Man. It's Unstoppable. Yeah. Or no, it is Invincible Iron Man. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Infamous, infamous Iron Man. Infamous Iron. Okay. It's yeah. been a couple of years. There's a lot yeah. going. <laughs> infamous, exactly. One of those Iron Man books at Marvel. Now, so going, going back to Marvel, because uh, I, I mentioned earlier that you know your guys' past work really set me on a right path in my in my uh, nerd career, right? Uh, and it's funny because I am obsessed with Matt Murdock and Daredevil. Like, and and it took, but it took a while to get there. And oddly enough, this is this is everybody makes fun of me when I tell this story. I read Ed's Daredevil before your guys's. I got a oh, good deal. Cool. No, that that's that we've been around long enough where we've heard like every version of it. <laughs> that's, that, and that's one of the ones you realize like as you're getting older. That's an interesting one to hear too when they. <laughs> Um, oh, go ahead. Ask. I'm sorry. I was gonna. No, you're good. Talking you're good. Before you ask the question again, I'm sorry. But I, I got a good deal on the Ed Brubaker omnibuses, and and I bought them and and read them, and I was I was just like, whoa. And 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 it starts with Matt like in prison, right? And I was like, how did he get here? And then I'm I'm online talking about it, right? And everybody's like, wait, you didn't read Bendis? You didn't read Bendis and Malieve Daredevil? And I was like, no, I haven't read it yet. And so. I actually, I bought, the omnibuses were very expensive when I went to search. Yeah, they were. Yeah, yeah. So I bought the three epic collections. Sorry about that. Out of my hands. Well, I got them. They reprinted them. I got the reprint. I got, they're on the shelf now, so don't worry. But right. I ended up, I got the three epic collections, read those, absolutely blew my mind. Like the the court scenes, like how you, how you guys make like court daytime TV drama so riveting and thank you a lot of research it was a lot of research thank you man and just so many just so many elements and and like as someone who was raised catholic as someone who like even though like i'm a heathen and don't believe in anything anymore but like the i'll never be able to escape that catholic guilt and i was like oh matt can't either and i get you know like this weird connective tissue that I was able to establish because of like my childhood, my upbringing with Matt. And then, and then, you know, like, uh, you know, Alex, I'm not, I'm not familiar with like your religious background, but like, Brian, I know like you're, you're a Jewish person and like, just what? how. <laughs> no. <laughs> what? But what? It, like the, the amount of research and respect and care that you put into Matt and how like, 
very outside of your own comfort zone you had to get to write at those levels i feel well not comfort zone it it wasn't anything uh other than the the violence isn't my comfort zone but uh, (laughs) uh, 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 (laughs) all the taekwondo right but you know no what was first of all daredevil uh is a a a book uh at marvel it has probably the strongest creative pedigree history yeah when you're offered the book you're immediately aware oh yeah this is the book this is why I want to make comics the book like yeah. this. You know, this is um, and not just Frank, which is are we are of an age where Frank Miller's Daredevil would be the reason you're in comics. And uh, uh, much like there's a generation right now that it's because of Brian K. Vaughn that there are Mark Millar. They're in comics. It's mm-hmm. it's uh, for us. It was Frank and Alan Moore and and Daredevil in particular. And so you're offered the gig and not only are we offered this the, the magic gig. But we're offered it from Joe Casada, the biggest Daredevil fan on the planet Earth, who just walked off his killer run and made it a hit book for the first time in forever, right? Mm-hmm. And so, and, and and he's your editor, like literally standing over us, go, you're know, like like don't mess up my toy that I, <laughs> right? So so it was uh, a, 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 a tremendous gig. On numerous levels, and um, that was how it started. And then, all the way through, we're having all of the wonderful things that happened to us, both personally, privately, on the book, on the page, behind the scenes. Everything was wonderful. And then, towards the end of the run, my friend Ed, we came up together, both at Caliber Comics. We literally had our comics published by the same publisher at the exact same time, and we had become dear friends, broke into Marvel at the same time had the same weird, weird over the top experiences at Marvel at the same time. And, in, you know, being in those Marvel retreat rooms during for the death of Captain America, you know, really big moments. And, and so uh, having Ed, one of my favorite writers is going to take over for us. And then having that moment, I was like literally in my basement, just like staring at a wall, thinking about like, what would be the best handoff? Like, like, Oh, we're in a, like, oh, we might be in a position where I can really, and I'm just remembering now, very inspired by Aaron Sorkin walking off the West Wing and leaving a garbage fire of plot for the next writer, for people who don't remember this now ancient story, Aaron Sorkin was gone and he leaves the the show with the uh, president's daughter has been kidnapped. The president has to step down from being president because of it. John Goodman takes over the presidency and John Goodman is his political enemy. And now he's the president and all hell is broken loose. And he doesn't give the uh, the new writers any notes. He just walks like mad lib it. Right. And thank you you for all the spoilers. It's been 20 years. (laughs) I was just, I was just, you just get into it. Anyway, I was just going to start watching that. that, So, um, so that so so I I was like oh what wh- how what wh- what could we do like what kind of what kind of bomb could we drop on Daredevil and, and and but I had the oh I'm no I know who's gonna follow me so we were getting to a place where thematically just the reality of this story was the the, the genuine most powerful thing that could happen to Matt at the end of this is that he he he, he pays for his crimes uh, and and goes to jail boy, that only works if someone else wants to pick that up, right? Like <laughs> you wanted to go to jail and then not like, you certainly don't want the next issue to be like, oh, oh what a terrible dream that last run of my book was, you know? So, which was uh, the fear. So I did, I called Ed in the middle of the night and I, I said, I have an idea, but it only works if you're completely 100% into it. And, uh, and, and I was lucky that he had not invested a lot of thought yet into where he was going with it. So when I said, Matt goes to jail. He goes, thank you. Like, 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 you know, that's a, like for a, a man of Ed's obvious immense talent, that is a story engine he could go nuts with. And, uh, and so I had the gift of not only knowing I could end my run so boldly, but that it was going to be picked up so, so well. And then I had a whole year like of, of knowing this so i could as mm. me and alex were landing the plane i had all the confidence in the world of where it was going to go and that is such a gift that um most creators don't have but particularly in mainstream comics 
to get to like end your run and then end your run well and confidently of where it's going to go. Most, you know, most of the time, I'm not even sure who's coming on after me, you know, and nor is it any of my business to be frank. It's not, I'm leaving, right? But to have to know it's not only uh, Ed, who I came up with, but that talent and and for him to take it, oh, what a, what a treat that was. I loved it. And knowing like as a fan, I would love this. Yeah. Like just that, that, that too, that, that I, I love shit like this. Yeah. It, as a, as a fan and as a, like that cemented daredevil, like that showed me, uh, cause, cause you were right. Like there, there's definitely, you know, of, of Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, um, you know, or, you know, Spider-Man even, uh, you, you know, uh, the Avengers, Wolverine, all these iconic characters, there's something about daredevil when yeah, you, you have to be like on, you have to be on your shit. You have to be at the top of your game to get that daredevil. Like, I mean, if you, if you, if you go back through and, and look at, at published daredevil comics, it's, 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 icon, it's, it's iconic, it's icon. Yeah. It just, uh, yeah, it's, it, it goes all the way back to the earliest days. All I, all I wanted to say yeah. is that uh, if you wanted to throw a bomb on the end of the uh, daredevil run, we should have just killed foggy. And I've been asking. Uh -huh. <laughs> Nobody would have. People, people played with it. Like it's, it, they, they, they always pulled. No, I feel like Foggy had been murdered a couple of times yeah. before we got to you the. You know, I, I just hated yeah. drawing Foggy the whole time. <laughs> I'm like, get rid of this guy, man. <laughs> Lose him finally. Kill is him. that? Did you think that the same about Echo, Alex? Is that is that why you guys uh, offed her in, in Moon Knight? Was it... No, that was me. That was me. <laughs> I, I won't put that on Alex. No, and again, no. well, you, and the, the one thing I want to add to your Daredevil bit that that is is that I've been thinking a lot about is going back from the earliest part of the Kevin Smith run all the way through is there's Joe Quesada. There's Joe mm -hmm. Quesada cheering us on, editing the book, helping us through, just you know, really, you know, clearing the space to let Alex be Alex. It was really, you know, a, a gift as you, as you get older, you look back and go, hey, look at the echo came out of the, like all the stuff that came out of, of, of that curation of uh, Joe and Nancy and the Marvel Knights that turned into Marvel, yeah, you know, as him as editor in chief. That was a, that was a hell of a, hell of a thing we had backing us up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was a it was a cool time, a cool time for Marvel. Well, I got to meet David Mack um at Planet Comic Con in Kansas City last year. And 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 the, he did a real cool panel with uh, Garth Ennis and Jimmy Palmiotti. And they, oh, they cool. talked they talked about Marvel Knights and the the kind of rock star mentality and like putting chairs up on the roof and big screens in the office and like trying to treat uh, Jimmy Jimmy said like you they were like, we're trying to bring MTV into Marvel. And, and and just learning that that story and and all these great things that came to be from that era, and then and then looking at you guys now, right? Like all the all the wonderful things you've accomplished, like Alex, countless countless covers, thousands of pages, just with Brian, like you know, like uh, and and then Brian, your your career, like speaks it, it speaks for itself, man. Uh, both of you, I, like, I'll tell you, Alex is one of my favorite. Uh, social media follows as well. Alex produces an enormous amount of original paintings, and uh, and honestly, it was a uh, one of the biggest influences on how I'm writing masterpiece is watching what was going on and the daily evolution of his uh, daily paintings. I was as as his most obsessive fan, watching the the change in the uh, in the in the in the line and in the brushstroke, and I was. Mm -hmm. Of making my choices based on that so if you follow alex online you're going to see some re really get to see some beautiful stuff thank yeah, you that was uh one of the uh effects of the pandemic that it had on me was to rethink the way i um approach um any artwork and uh i moved away from working digitally um which i'd done for years before um 2020 and I sat down again, uh, working with analog media. I started working with watercolors, uh, different kinds of paint, acrylics. So these, the last two years, oh, now three years, I've been drawing a lot on paper, a lot. Oh, wow. and you awesome. can yeah, see a lot of people don't know that some of the early Daredevil stuff is digital. And I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. That wasn't the standard at all. And um, Alex was kind of creating brushes and uh filters that that were still the same brushes baby i still still <laughs> the same brushes right now still the same shit yeah but but we decades before it was the norm yeah. it was wow. kind of cool to watch yeah
Well, I mean, the you guys decades before a lot of stuff happened, you guys were doing stuff together. I would, I, I, I just, I mean, I'll, I'll say it. You guys, you guys have have done some great things not for for comic books, for story, for storytelling in general. Oh, Blake, obviously. you're being so sweet. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not wired to to uh, process your 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 loveliness. I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna slowly take it in during the day. I say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. No, thank, that thank same you. Brian that could easily process Matt Murdock's Catholic guilt yes. through my Jewish prism is is not always able to pull in the compliment <laughs> at the same time. So I appreciate. I waited. You. I waited years to say that. <laughs> That's I, hilarious. I, I I know. I know. I've I've kept you guys uh, for for a while. I do though. Like real quick though, and I know Brian. I know you probably get asked this all, all the time, but I'm going to ask you again because now you're on my show, and I'm playing Spider Man right now. I bought I bought the fancy new PS5 Spider Man edition with the Venom. Alex, you should see this fucking video game, man. Unbelievable. Ryan, I, don't I, don't, I don't play. I don't play video I, games. I, I just, you know me. I, I don't do. No, that. I know, but you know how, like every once in a while, they create a game where everyone goes, "Holy shit!" Yeah. It, I, it, I, it, I, when I come, when I come to your place, show it to me. But you know, the only game I gotta tell <laughs> you, that I don't want to take away. I don't want to take away from from uh, what, you, what you're about to say. But the only game I play, and I play with my kids, is uh, Mario Mario Kart. I, we raised Mario Kart. That's hey, that's it. one of the best games ever. Like that's fine. I, 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 not, this I game, not, uh, yeah, we'll leave it at that. Yes. This game I have no authorship of at all, so I can just enjoy like the rest of it. Star okay. Miles Morales is unbelievable. Yeah. So yeah. But anyway, what what was it like, man? To because I remember, I remember reading Ultimate Spider Man. Okay, and I remember, dude, I I ugly cried. When you, when he died, when when May slaps Captain America at the funeral and says, "You did this, you did, dude, I what I cry, dude, you made me cry so hard." I love. You shouldn't smile when you say I made you cry, yeah, right? Yeah, you're just like smiling. you're just like okay, yes. Sorry. I probably should stop smiling. You <laughs> know, but and and when when Miles came after that, like when this new Ultimate Spider Man launched, and like instantaneously, I was attached. And 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 getting ready for the same kind of wild ride that you put me through for for the ultimate Peter Parker and now ultimate Miles Mor or well it's it's only Miles Morales but in this ultimate universe right and like it was just so perfect and then you made me cry again when Venom killed Miles' mom spoiler alert but it's it's this happened a long spoiler time alert. not again <laughs> that was a bad one that was a bad spoiler that was terrible <laughs> but uh, it, it, I, I, seeing him um teasing him in the movies and then seeing him in spider-verse and now seeing him like on the ps5 looking better than any video game has ever looked before right yeah. like what does that feel like to you man like you're 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 miles's dad like you're you're god to him right you created everything about him and no, it's now me, me it, it was uh just so we're clear it's sarah pacelli and, and i okay. created miles morales with the incredible help and influence of uh, my friend David Walker and uh, Joe okay. Quesada. Okay. Uh, they both uh, put stuff into the, um, into the stew that's undeniable. And I, and I love to give them uh, uh, their, their flowers at every chance I get. And one of the reasons David and I created Naomi together was in, in response to how helpful he was with uh, Miles, just keeping everything honest and, and true as we were go going forward with Miles and being just someone I can talk to about it a great deal. So yeah, you know, it was an amazing time. It was, it was, uh, 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 we, we didn't do it out of, Oh no, sales are down, do something. <laughs> it was, um, it, which is, you know, what happens in, in every mm -hmm. medium, but in, in our regard, it was, well, things are going really well. What could we do better? And the conversation slowly over literally a year and a half brought, uh, brought about, the idea of doing Miles Morales. And um, then while we were building it behind the scenes, the conversation kind of spilled out into the public with, you know, Donald Glover putting on his uh, Spider-Man mm -hmm. underroofs. And and I know I see there's a lot of d d um, conversation online about, about this. So I'll, I'll just, I'll let people know, like um, we were building Miles and separately Troy put on his Spider-Man underroofs and, and then we saw it happen while we were building our thing and went, oh, we're 
this is this is a good time to do this. This is this looks right. And uh and and we're so grateful for that. And uh and so yeah, so it just was an amazing time. Now cut to now I live in a space where the movie has a thousand crew members. And among those are some of my personal favorite artists of any medium, like uh in including Sanford Green and Chris Anka and Bill Sienkiewicz and like people who are contributing to this movie consistently. Uh, Patrick O'Keefe, who I, uh, you know, the uh, production designer. So I have that. And then I have also in the game space names I'm less familiar with, but obviously the best names in game development, making the Spider-Man games. And I just sit back and I considering the, the reality of why Miles brings out this like like what a what a gift that is uh, that i cannot take responsibility for or or I, but but can't help but notice that miles is bringing out the best work in thousands of people all at the same time wow. including you go online and everyone's creating their own spider-man fan art and some of it is freaking brilliant you know some of it's making it into the movies right and 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 that it's it's an artistic creative event that just keeps going and going and going and every day it's just hugs and it all comes together in a hashtag on my instagram called miles morales birthday cakes and if ever you're feeling like shit you can just go there and look at all these kids all over the world having like their own miles morales birthday parties and i can't believe it in like i can't believe it I, on any level it is bizarre it is a, a a hug that never stops, and I, and I just have to be get zen about it, and 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 just be as present as I can, and and let it happen. But yeah, it's very strange, and it's beautiful. It's beautiful on ways that'll take me years to process. So if I sound like I don't have a process, that is what you're hearing. I like that. <laughs> I like that you're still not used to it. That's good. I like that. No, um, and I just 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 literally just last week, the week started with I was in LA with. Phil Lord poking at the third movie uh, came home to Halloween where all those little Miles Morales were, were running around in my neighborhood. And then I went, it's just, just like something is happening in Portland. And then I turned on Jimmy Kimmel and the whole Halloween thing it was kids dressed like Miles. And I was just like, I, I just can't believe it. I just can't believe it. When we were kids, the costumes were so shitty. They're just that <laughs> plastic like thing with the with the with the band that would break immediately before you could even leave the house. Anyway, Alex wants to go. <laughs> no, Alex is already working. Okay, Alex is working. All right, good. As long as as long as you're working, man. How many yeah. issues is Masterpiece going to be, guys? Six. 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 So far, we six, have six or six thousand. One of the two. One of the two. All right. Well, Let speaking of that that notion of like a a, a hug that never ends, that's basically what i think when i read comics by you guys uh, uh it's it just like gets me excited for <laughs> right they didn't tell you they didn't tell you talking yeah, to me like, never in... ends. it's like terrifying man <laughs> not an actual the 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 emotions yeah. no, even, worse, even worse even worse <laughs> even worse <laughs> but no, it's it's because it's funny because there's nothing like when that's always a weird feeling when like people don't let go and you're like, no, I'm done with the hug and they haven't let go. But when Brian says it and he's like, oh, it's like a hug that never ends. It's like, oh yeah, that's exactly what it's like. But yeah, anyways, no, but in a good way, like a non awkward hug totally. that never ends. Yeah. I really like the comic books. These guys make long story short. <laughs> a it's, a, it's a post post pandemic hug. I hope <laughs> Wait, he's been trying to land this plane for 10 minutes. Let, let, let us let the, Come no, the perfect the, the perfect landing is my daughter who just came back. I let her in, and and that will be my segue to go and see uh, what's going on downstairs. No, he's not he's not letting you say anything nice about us anymore. He's done. Yeah, no, oh, that's well, it. On, us, on that note, everybody, you need to pre-order masterpiece. It's going to drop in shops on December thirteenth. It's a book that you need. I've been privileged enough to read it, and 
if people that are familiar with with Alex and Brian's work, this is going to put you right back into that sweet spot. Okay. It's going to be right back where you need to be, and you're going to be excited for issue two and issue three and issue four and issue five and issue six and whatever workload Brian is teasing about dumping on Alex too. Like I'm already excited. I don't even know oh, what no. they're talking about. <laughs> No, it's just like we like to like uh, everyone that works, they have a different like how they some people go, give me all the scripts at once. And some people okay. go, give, just give me enough. Yeah, I, I'm 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 at that second group. I want yep. not everything at once because I want to know what's going to happen. Because you don't and, I, and script, I use that right? time to just sit on the script and th I, I make changes like last night. Yeah. I, I made a change that that I, I, I had the script in front of me. So anyway, I'm, I'm veering off the goodbye again. Thank you for having us. Thank you for reading the book. Thank you for all the nice things that you said. Uh, they were well received, even though we don't seem that we're receiving them well. We are absolutely receiving them well. And thank you. Also, for those, uh, uh, we were talking about Scarlet for so much that um, the complete Scarlet, all three volumes are, are in one beautiful Dark Horse volume on sale now called The Complete Scarlet. It is absolutely oh, cool. my favorite thing Alex Malib has ever done. And uh, I, I, if you haven't seen it yet, do check it out. And some people Please. don't know we did a third volume too. Because so if 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 you want to know how we landed that plane, check it out. Yeah, uh, I can't I can't recommend that enough. And I think Dark Horse is like I know uh, United States of Murder Inc. Like you did some new stuff there, but the old stuff got re released. I think. Yep. You're they're re releasing a uh, cover, uh, which, yeah, is, I'll, I'll which is what let, you're doing with David Mack. And here's here. So, uh, Dark Horse is our home, uh, our home at Jinx World for most things. And uh, and so we'll be uh, for the next a few years of producing brand new material. Um, uh, uh, we'll be doing a brand new series just like Masterpiece. Uh, and then uh, follow that up with the return of something that um, uh, people were really into. So we just last year, we did Joy Operations that did very well for us. Joy Operations will be returning. The ones will be returning. Thank you for supporting the ones that did very well for us as well. Uh, we also have three volumes of Pearl with Michael Gatos, co-creator mm. Jessica Jones, three volumes of Murder, Inc., that are done with me, Michael Gatos, and Taki Soma. Cover with David Mack, a, a just absolute beautiful book that David and I did together, and uh, so much more coming, uh, including a big Hollywood announcement forthwith uh, um, for a lot of that. And, and also included in the uh, Dark Horse line is our classic books like Jinx and Goldfish and Taurus. So. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. All right. That means it's time for us she's, to go. She's like, you nerds need to shut up. Uh, all right. Yeah, real, <laughs> real quick, Alex, I know you got to go. And, but like, guys, real quick, will you let everybody know where's the best place to follow you, like online and keep track of what you got coming out? Go, for me, it's easy. Jinxworld.com. It'll take you to my sub stack. It'll take you to Blue Sky. It'll take you to Threads. It'll take you to Instagram. Um, but if you want to hop on the Substack newsletter is the best way to get a hold, uh, find out what's going on. And, uh, we have actually genuine surprising announcements coming. So sign up and you'll see what's going on. Alex, where are you online? And, and you can find me on Twitter or currently known as X. Ugh. Uh, Ugh. yeah. Alex, uh, Alex Malev is my, uh, handle. And then, uh, Instagram is Alex underscore Malev. All right, we got to get you over to Blue Sky. Got, and gonna... Blue, Sky, Blue Sky, I don't know the whole address. I, I am there. You can search <laughs> me. Uh, my gorgeous picture shows up, and you can recognize me right away. There nice. you go. It's nice. not an imposter. Right, well, guys, thank you for having us. This was amazing. Us. Blake, this was so amazing. I, I can't thank you enough for your, your kind words. That This was a lot of fun. Well, and I can't I wanna... thank you guys enough for your ridiculously awesome comics. And, and for giving me the time of day. Too. I want to thank you, too. I um, it, This has been fun listening to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh good we got a good we got a listener blake yeah uh, that's we, right. we got, got one your first we got listener one. was right here <laughs> all right i'm going i'm gonna go parent my children I'll, I'll talk to you guys soon thank you very much alex we'll talk soon soon all right thank well, you so much guys this was so bye -bye. cool appreciate you